guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I am here with a special video today and I wanted to talk about Irish beasts and where to find them in literature. This is just a fun video about different kind of um, mythological Irish creatures um, and different books you can find these type of creatures in. Not all the books I'm going to talk about are by Irish authors or set in Ireland but they are all kind of associated with um, kind of these Irish beasts um, that sometimes pop up. The first kind of creatures I want to talk about are the Aishi. So these are kind of the fairy folk um, or supernatural beings that live, they're they are kind of thought to have lived underground or in kind of an invisible world that coexists alongside the human world. So for this creature, I've decided to talk about A Crack and Everything by Ruth Frances Long. I've talked about this before, but in this book in particular, um, the fairy folk that are in this book live in these kind of um, invisible kind of um, world that literally right beside our world and um, so these different streets and lanes that we don't see with our own human eye um, and you have to kind of have kind of been granted something special by the fairies to have been able to um to be able to see these different types of streets um, and these different places so this book has all types of fairy creatures it has angels it has demons it has fairies it has um red caps it is like it is all the type of general fairy creatures but it's all kind of set in dublin in ireland um and it is all very much firmly based in irish fairy tales um, and Irish folklore and um, which I love and um, so the Aishi are definitely something that does appear in this book. Another kind of mythological creature that comes up a lot um, in Irish folklore is the changelings. So changelings are kind of fairy babies that have been swapped out by the fairies to live with humans and generally the human baby has been taken by the fairies to live with them um, and I want to talk about the good people by Hannah Kent and um, which is all kind of based around this woman who is firmly firmly believes that her grandson who is who's physically and mentally disabled and um, she firmly believes that he is a changeling and that um, her real grandson is out living with the fairies and it's quite a tragic tale in how kind of um, people did believe in these old ways and they were you know they, they did these things to try and like change the boy back and to try and get the fairies to take the changeling away and replace him with the real baby. How they didn't think that they were doing things wrong because they believed in this kind of Irish folklore um, so much um, I just thought it was done perfectly. Another kind of word to use um, for fairies is called Dina Moch which is the good people um, and for this one I wanted to talk about a book that has a lot of kind of fairy creatures in it but they have a different name in this book and it's called Various by Steve Augard and the fairy creatures in this book are called the Various and this is about a little girl who goes to live um, I think it's on her aunt or her uncle's farm um, and she ends up discovering that there is this whole community of kind of little people um, that live in this woods beside her and um, she ends up becoming friends with some of these um, creatures and they are kind of like fairies, they are gnomes, they, they're kind of all these kind of different they don't really have like proper like fairy names or gnome names or whatever um but they are just called collectively the various and um I haven't read this book in a very long time but it was one I absolutely loved uh, when I did originally pick it up and it was one of those random books I had no idea what it was about until I started reading it and I found love and for anyone who loves a bit of um magic and a bit of mystery I definitely would uh, recommend picking this up because this is just a lot of fun. Another um Irish mythological creature is the Enbar or the Kapal Ishka, and that is obviously the water horses and I think people will probably know what I'm going to talk about and I am going to talk about the Scorpio races by Maggie Steve Water which are all about the Kapal Ishka and these giant ferocious beasts of horses um, that come from the sea and this, this book is all about this uh, young girl who wants to race against the Kapal Ishka. she wants to take part in this race um, and part of this struggle to uh, capture a uh, one of these water horses um, and it is set in this kind of it's never really told where this island is they live on but I feel like this book has a lot of um, Celtic themes and Irishy themes in it um, and it, obviously with the Kapal Ishka it's obviously Irish um, and um, yeah I definitely think this is where I say Maggie Steve Otter got a lot of her, her inspiration for the type of creatures that she's talking about in the Scorpio races is definitely close to the end bar of the Kapal Ishka from Irish uh, folklore. A, another Irish creature I want to talk about is the Far Jarek or the Red Man which also in other type of fairy tales and folklore um, known as Red Caps and there is one very famous red cap that has been very popular recently in a very popular series and that is obviously The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. In this book Jude's stepfather Maddock is a red cap um, and it is very famous that he is he is this kind of um, fairy captain he is um, in charge of like the army he's very ferocious and he does soak his cap in the blood of his enemies and this is kind of a different kind of version of the red cap um, and it's a very like violent one but it's one that I really really love and um, so when I thought about Farage Arig I immediately thought of Maddock and uh, all his ways in The Cruel Prince and the thing is he's not actually that bad of a person and um, like there are parts of him that you do, you do really really like and 
there are times that he does things wrong, but I don't hate him. And he's just one, he's one of these characters that's very grey. It's a very grey area. I don't hate Maddox. I actually feel like I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but yeah, he's definitely an interesting character. See, one of the most famous Irish creatures um, in folklore is the Leprechaun. Um, and for this book, I want to talk about Mad Sweeney, who is in American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, and American Gods as a book wasn't one that I actually really, really enjoyed. I have kind of an unpopular opinion that I, I didn't really find it that great. I actually really, really enjoyed the TV show. Um, and I really love the depiction of Mad Sweeney in the TV show as well. There's just this angry man who just really loves a drink and really loves to fight um, and it does fall into a lot of stereotypes you know, like fighting drinking Irish and um, but at the same time he is a leprechaun but he's not this small bearded man dressed in green which I do love it kind of goes away against that stereotype um, and it's really nice to see like a leprechaun that is kind of big and strong and ferocious in in that type of way um, and I can do all these ma magic tricks and stuff like that um, and I just really love his his depiction in American Gods um, and he's one that oh it's kind of one that always kind of makes me laugh and um, yeah I just love I love Matt Sweeney. Marrow are also known as mermaids um, and for this I want to talk about The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill which is obviously the Little Mermaid retelling story of um, a mermaid called Gaia who gives up a lot to be with a boy that she believes she's fallen in love with um, on the land and um, this is a very interesting like, look at The Little Mermaid it is kind of a feminist twist on The Little Mermaid um, I won't say that this book does a lot of things right but there are some bits of it that I really really enjoy as well and um, the cover is stunning I love it and um, I really love mermaids and um, they are just they are just one of those mythological creatures that I have always been drawn to and I just really really love and um, so yeah this is how this is the book I knew I wanted to get a copy of just for the beautiful cover um, and for the fact that it's about mermaids. And another uh, Irish creature is the Olifest, which is kind of a dragon-esque creature. And um, there's so many books I could talk about that have dragons in them. We all know the typical ones. Um, and for this one, I'm gonna talk about one I've talked about before, but I haven't mentioned in a while. The first book in a fantasy series um, called The Copper Promise. It is the Copper Cat trilogy, um, but the first book is called The Copper Promise and it is by Jen Williams. Um, and this is about these three unlikely heroes that end up awakening a god who is in the shape of a dragon um, and they end up kind of <laughs> bringing ruin to the world accidentally and they have to try and sort it out they have to try and fix it um, but there are there are a lot of depictions of dragons half dragons kind of these dragon-esque children dragon half dragon half human warriors in this series and um, that is like really really interesting to, to look at but I did really really enjoy just the overall ferocious dragon in this book that is like not a dragon you can tame she is a god she is angry she wants to kill everyone that's her thing um and yeah i loved i loved this trilogy um i must reread it soon um but it's great and it's a great depiction of a dragon so there's all the irish beasts i'm going to talk about today and where you can find let me know your thoughts if you have any books that have these creatures that you would recommend i would love to know and i will see you guys again next time